Okay, another creative uh, tutorial. Well, hopefully creative. I'm gonna today. I'm gonna use two applications. I'm gonna use uh, Illustrator and Photoshop to create an effect. What I plan to do is I've got my illustration. This is one of my illustrations I did. Some nice stock sites. Interesting enough, uh, but wouldn't it be more interesting if it had a uh, pattern background? And you can obviously do plain, uh, striped, whatever. It's quite easy to do in uh, Photoshop. If you want to spend some more time, you could do a mesh tool and make it even strange gradient and everything. But wouldn't it be interesting if you could do a half tone effect in, in the background series of dots? You could. You could do it by hand in Illustrator and do each dot separately and do that, but it's time consuming. So what I'm going to do is try and show you a way of achieving it quickly inside uh, Photoshop and then putting it into Illustrator. So I'm going to go to Photoshop, open up, no sorry, make a new document, I'm going to call it uh, half turn, you don't have to call it anything actually because we won't be using the final thing, oh actually we'll be saving it so you could call it something. Okay. So make sure it's got a white background. There's our square. Okay. What we want to do is to make a marquee in there. So I'm just going to go to the top corner, make a radial circular marquee, like so. And then we're going to go to my gradient tool, make sure I select the black and white, okay, which is one of the presets. Now, uh, before I go any further, you can, if you want to, change the position of the... Uh, so if you wanted a mild uh, half-tone, you can lower this, or if you wanted a stronger half-tone, you could reduce it up like that. Okay. Anyway, what I'm going to do, make sure it's on radial gradient, which is this one. And then, I'm sure this is going to go the wrong way, but basically fill that with... That's, no, that's what you want. Okay. Now you'll notice it's a complete circle with a radial blur. I think it's not in the center. So I'm just going to just do it again so it's looking more like it's in the center. Okay, that's good. Now the next thing we need to do is to make the actual... Uh, actually, we can deselect the uh, marquee. What we can do is actually try to make this into a half tone. The way we do this is we go here and we go to Pixelate. You notice there's an option here called Color Half Tone. Now you're wondering where it's black and white, you don't need to have Color Half Tone, but it is the effect we want. Okay. A little dialog box comes up. Now, <coughs> you can change this. Uh, basically, f I would say 5 is the minimum, but you can go all the way up to 20. And it depends on how big your document is. I'm going to just do a quick test on 10, see what happens, because you can always do it again. Okay, just press that and you notice it's obviously too small. Okay, if I zoom in you'll notice it does bring in a, a half tone effect. Okay, but it's not the way we want it, so I'm going to undo it. Did undo the Z, uh, deselect it. Also, make sure it's on grayscale. So I'm going to reduce, oh, increase that maximum radius, say 30. Okay, see if that makes any difference. Yeah, you see what's happened there? It's actually created a nicer half tone effect because the, the size of the document dictates how big these circles are going to be blending out. What it's doing is it's taking the black as a the solid one and building it up so it gets smaller and smaller and smaller as it goes to white. Okay. Now again, if you wanted to make those even more bigger, let's see if we can just change it once more. Pixelate half tone. Let's put it up to 40. See what happens. There you go. You notice it's getting even bigger. So I'm going to use that. I quite like that. So what I'm going to do then is to save that. Half tone on my. I'm just going to stick it on my uh, desktop for now as a JPEG. Make sure it's full quality. It doesn't matter if it isn't. I don't believe, but uh, that's what we want to do. Okay, go to Illustrator now. 
Now what we need to do is open that JPEG. So I've got to quickly find it on my desktop. Half ten, there it is. Let's say it'll open in a minute. There you go. And now what we need to do is do this. We have to select the object. Okay, first, which so as long as you've got the uh, bounding box, it means it's selected. And that should initiate the live tracing. What I tend to do is go to the tracing options. Okay. And you need to make sure it says ignore white. I'm just going to put it on preview, see what we get. What you notice is quite nice. The actual circles have become a little or even more uh, defined than it when it was before. But you can, if you want to, play with some of the options. I always tend to bring a lot of my threshold images in at 180. It just helps thicken and strengthen the uh, blacks. And it's perfected the sum of the circles even more. Did you notice the difference there? Anyway, maybe you didn't. Okay, once you're happy with your settings, you just press trace. And there's a vectorized halftone effect. Now, at the moment, it's just uh, an object. You may want to expand that, which means everything becomes its own separate object yeah and just to make life a lot easier I'm just going to then make it into a compound so it's one object copy that go over to my boy again paste paste it onto the uh, outline layer of the kid so that's going to move it so that's in the center ish and there we have it, a half tone effect now that's a bit strong so you may want to choose a different color we could we could do actually is to now because it's a compound actually apply let's do a radial on there let's just hide the actual documents let's just flip it yeah and it creates a nice softer effect uh, in the background but you'll notice as I said it's an actual half tone effect which makes it a little bit more interesting as a pattern okay so that's how you create half tone patterning inside a, a Photoshop and Illustrator.